drunk. I, I meet people all the time. Are you saved? You tell me when they go to church. Come on, man. When the devil goes there too. And they got offended. Amen, brother. When the devil comes here. Come I'm walking here on Friday morning. He's already here. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on, man. Break the night. I can go with him, brother. Come on, man. I walk in this place sometimes. I know what spirit's been hanging around. I can tell. You see, here's the problem. Some of you bring that junk in here with you, but you always come come out and take it out there with you. I want you to leave it in here. Oh, I knew you could. I want you to leave it in here. Because in here, that drug addiction ain't got no power over you. Come on, brother. Oh, that alcohol ain't got no power over you. That pornography ain't got no power over you. That abusing your wife ain't got no power over you in here. Because when it drops off, you'll become a new person. Leave it at the altar of God. Because it has no power. When you're going to God's in here, it can't be enough. Years ago, 
I know the same electric light I got over the other side. Wayne Stevens here. I thought I'd seen Wayne come here. You sit on my bike, them handlebars are crooked, wasn't it, brother? I was heading out west, going to this great state of Oklahoma. Them in Pennsylvania has to be arguing for the worst roads in America. <laughs> I mean, I'm on an electric ride and I feel like I'm going to read the train. Tum, 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 tum. <laughs> Running 80 miles an hour bus because there's nothing in Oklahoma I want to see. <laughs> I'd sooner be away from it than sooner be in it. If you know anything about football, you know what I'm talking about. You with me? You with me? Okay. My brother was stationed there in the Air Force. I stopped one time and seen him. I said, I'll never be back. So I drive through. And it was raining. And I'm still running 85 or 90 miles an hour because I was on destination. And all of a sudden, he had to be careful training because as hard as it was forward, it was harder going to get into the passing lane. And all you people say you want to pray when it's right before you die. Let me show you something. Come on, Mike. I went to change lanes. And my front wheel got locked into concrete. And the back of my bike jumped up to 90 some miles an hour. My face is probably that close to the asphalt. I didn't think about John 3 16. Come on. I didn't think about the Bible. I didn't think about Jesus. Come on. I didn't think about mom and dad. Come on. Only thought all that this is going to hurt. Yeah. Only thought I had. That's right. So you think you're going to pray, you won't have time. No, so you ain't. Yes, all of a sudden, I guess God said, This nut for him, I better save it. <laughs> that front end, that front end done went over, and that back end popped out. My bike, my back end went to the bounce, and that bike began to bounce. And cars going everywhere, man. Look like smash up derby, or I was a ping pong ball and missing. And I got the bike under control. I did. God did. Hallelujah. I wasn't nervous to warm up, but afterward I got mad. I hit that thing a hundred miles an hour. Where is a state trooper in Oklahoma? I'm Pentecostal. I'm going to lay hands on him and explain he needs to fix his road. You'll figure that out, homie. <laughs> but the seriousness of it, I could have went out that quick. Because yes, if it went on over and pancaked me in that asphalt, that pretty smile wouldn't be there no more. True story. And I rode that bike for years in my hand. Why do you tell the truth? Them handlebars are crooked, but won't you change them? It reminds me of what God did for me that trip. Amen. Because no man could have saved that bike. I didn't do nothing to save it. But see, if God holds you tomorrow, you don't live in fear. If you truly believe that you're a child of God, there's no fear in you right now. I may have been that, what they say. I'm not that no more. I may have been drunk for 15 years, but I've not been drunk for 15 days now because I'm a child of God. I may have been strung out for 21 years, but I'm strung out on Jesus for 22 days now. I don't know what I did yesterday, but I know about my tomorrow because I'm calling the King of Glory. I'm telling you something. You've got to speak your deliverance and step into it. I can pray for you, but until you believe it and you speak it's never going to happen. Amen. I can put a band-aid on it, but until you say, I'm healed, I'm set free, I'm delivered. Amen. Let me try to close with this thing. Get some music on, boys. Hallelujah. I sure wish we knew on the highway to hell someone might get up here and get off of it. Hallelujah. I'm looking for that morning train. I'm looking for that morning train. Because I surely would hate it. Why well, catch the evening train? And he's down at the train station.
you begin to look around, you see luggage sitting everywhere. Because, see, some of us got there for the morning train. He said, leave everything behind. Just get on board, boys. You're going to hear that I'm to you right now. I don't care how long you've been in church. But you know how long you've not been of the church. Come on. Let me repeat this again. Amen. I don't care how long y'all been in church. I'm talking to some of you. I wish you'd let me come back and touch you. I really do. But some of you, you do know how long you've not been in the church. The Bible says your sin will surely find you out. All right. The way you live, and if it ain't of the fruit of the Spirit, you will repent. Yeah, I feel it. Don't get mad all you want to. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach it. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach it. It's much easier to preach a little blessing sermon that. About 28 minutes, get out here and go get some beef. I'm trying to say, you can't preach hard to fight because they won't like it. I found out if you don't preach hard, they don't get it. <laughs> Amen. Let's talk about your church folks for a little bit. We like to get what we want out of it and leave the rest of it on the table. They've changed a lot in America. When we sit down and eat at night, we sit at the table overnight. You didn't give your TV and go to the and go flop down in front of a TV. We had three changers and one automatic. I was the youngest. I was paying the camera. But then it did change. But we sit at the table. Mom not once ever asked us what we want to eat. Not once. I still don't like turnip greens. But if I go to my mama's house and Chris from down the table, I'll get the biggest bowl. But see, in America, we pick and choose what we eat now. I don't like that. When I went to the Marine Corps, okay, man, I'm telling you what you had beans every meal. The birds let you know about it, too. Don't bring that on me. My boys that went through boot camp and I asked them, how many beans did they They didn't make us eat beans. I said, even the Marine Corps sold out. Because see, we sit down at daddy's table. Daddy's been a type of God and God's a type of daddy. You're going to stick with me on this. What he worked for, what was put on that table. And as I've gotten old, if it was good enough for my daddy to eat, it must be good enough for me to eat. Cabbage, cooked cabbage. The sleepiest stuff in the country. Oh, I can get run by one bite and I gotta excuse myself because I'm done. Clean as whistle. Just gonna figure that out too. But when I go to my mama's house, I'll get the biggest bowl up and I'll sit closer to the bathroom. And I eat it. But the point I'm trying to make with I'm having fun, I know. But what the masters put before you, you need to partake of it. When you use that call-out service and outside service to outside line to get something you don't need in your system. Oh, you ain't listening to me. You're reaching outside of what the master wants you to have. It's poisonous to your soul. Well, that church down there does it. My buddy says he's a Christian. He does it. Buddy sleeps with all the other buddies. Watch for when you do that too. Mm. I'm preaching oh. here now. I know I'm too raw for most of you. That's why a lot of people don't come back. You just read too raw. You ain't heard no all preaching that you sit under Apostle Paul. Amen. And I just wonder how much that King James said that his attitude out of it. What the master sits before you, the master knows you need to eat of it. Oh, I'm preaching in tonight, you just ain't listening to me. See, 
Mom and Daddy knew what we needed. We didn't sit around eating all that sugar back in the day. We had grown up here and had no taste at all. They just absorbed the milk. True story. My granddad go get fresh milk. Fresh milk, I'm going fresh. I never did like more milk than cherry, but I ain't enough of it. I'm gonna go walk on my day. Ain't got to do it. Yeah, we had one of them cows named Betsy, too. So, what the master spreads before you, you need to eat it. But I just don't pick a sermon. I don't put a, oh, la 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 it don't start on Friday morning or Thursday night. I'm already working on stuff for weeks down the line, I guess. Because I'm in love with Jesus, and the only way I get to know him is getting his word. When I met Stephanie, my beautiful wife, she said, you like to talk? I said, I'm looking for answers. I want to know She ain't here today, she's fighting some things, but I see I do God the same way. I keep on talking. Because I know I'm gonna get the answer. And I know I'm gonna see what's coming down the line. I don't know about some of you guys. But sometimes I think I can look down the road and I see feet suffering. But well, we know hell's on its way. And people threaten the church or the church is quitting God and have the form of godliness and deny the power thereof all across America. Organizations is, is voting on to accept this sin and that sin and all this sin. Well, let me tell them organizations, I wish it was going global tonight. We need to get on global TV. Because I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Absolutely no sin is going to get in up there. It's time the church realizes we need to be holy. Oh, oh that's not going to preach there. Being holy means you got to do something. Oh, 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 that's right. Means you got to change your attitude. Means you got to change the way you're doing business. You got to learn how to love people. I've got to learn how to give some people some of the most awful things in my life. And I'm going to forgive Not because I'm going to go out deep with them, but because I'm going to go to heaven. Oh, my God. Amen. Lord, help me. Amen. So I'm going to ask you guys, bring it down just enough. I like that French. What's that for? I'm going to take the French on. I don't know why I get a guitar out there, guys. They put, they cut fingers in positions. I don't even know fingers to get in positions. <laughs> now, I want you to listen, all seriousness. Yeah. We get y'all to divide attention. We'll be talking, shut up for a few moments. I need you to cut run by the attention. Come on, brother. Someone's talking side to side for one time. Let me watch. I want you to hear this. Say, that's me, Frank. This is a bike man. You want to be bikers? Just be bikers. Come on, man. Eventually, eventually you want to make Jesus Christ. Why not now? Eventually, eventually you're going to meet him. You don't have a guarantee leaving this place, crossing this road, getting your home. Lord, I wish I had time to preach God's going to burn your barbecue up because I don't. You need to talk to a friend of mine that left out of church on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Pastor preached, God's going to burn your barbecue up. He laughed and jumped up out of the church. Thought he's better than everybody. Had it all figured out. He lived right beside 460 in Waxburg. He was inside his house. And he heard this awful commotion. Big old crash 
he ran it outside. His daughter had been run over and his son was killed. You say, God, do that. God will do what he's got to do to get your attention. Don't you think I'm blessing with you? He'll take that that you love because he loves you. My buddy Carlos is a preaching machine today. But his anointing cost him a whole lot. He had to pay way too much for it. You say God's that way? Yes, he is. He's a jealous God. Amen. Yes, I know some of you find his stories. I don't believe that. I don't believe in all that. But go on. Go on and dictate you a, a, a flower coat and Jesus freak and be happy. But he expects us to be men and women of God. Amen. I don't preach this hard to to make you mad or, or to act. I wish God would let me preach in here. Jeez, I'd be nice to be. They said, ah, oh, <laughs> it's a great sermon, Jesus. It is great sermon, Jesus. But we're workers in the vineyard. It's harvest time. And the Bible says, look out at the harvest, the fields of water, and the labors of fruit for you. There's a lot of pretend. There's a lot of pretend out here, all in the name of Jesus. But where is that fruit remaining? Why is it in the highways and the byways? We're going to hit these streets harder than we've ever hit this year. Because Jesus is going to come. Why didn't you get out the four walls? You want a new building? I can't get you out of the old one. Mm. I'm preaching this body. Father, I preached exactly what you laid on my heart tonight, God. Hallelujah.